Thanks everyone for joining us today. This will be a MetaGeek product overview and uh, all of these tools are available at StreakWave. So um, definitely recommend checking them out. Um, on the agenda today, I'm gonna introduce myself and talk a little bit about MetaGeek. And uh, we're gonna go over three main products here. We're gonna go over Channelizer, which is a Windows only software and hardware kind of combination. Uh, we sell this in a Channelizer Essential Bundle, which again is available at uh, StreakWave. And then I'm going to talk about Wi-Spy Air, which is uh, also a, a spectrum analysis tool and Wi-Fi troubleshooting tool, but this works on iOS and Android. Uh, so this works on mobile devices. And uh, this is a pretty new tool, and I'm really excited to kind of showcase it here. And then finally, we're going to talk about IPA, which is kind of the next step into wireless troubleshooting. This is the packet layer. Um, PA stands for packet analysis. <clears throat> Again, this is a Windows only tool and it comes with some hardware <clears throat> as well. And then finally, like Angela said, we're gonna open up the uh, floor for some questions and uh, see if we uh, got any questions from you guys. So a little bit about myself. My name is Casey here. I am the CX specialist. Um, I have a few certifications put on by the CWNP program, which I highly recommend checking out to further your knowledge on Wi-Fi. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Kathy underscore Fi. Uh, there's a pretty uh, large community of, of experts on Twitter. Uh, so I highly recommend checking that out as well and, and posing some questions to some of these guys that I follow as, as they're all uh, really open about uh, sharing their knowledge of Wi-Fi. And, and there's a lot of knowledge to be shared uh, on, on Twitter, actually. A little bit about MediGeek. We're based here in Boise, Idaho, and uh, this is a, a picture from our office downtown. I'm um, working from home right now, uh, of course, and so uh, hopefully I'd like to uh, get back to that office here soon and have things uh, back on track. Just to dive into the uh, the software uh, product demo here, uh, the first one I want to sh show you is Channelizer, and we call this the deep dive into spectrum analysis. Uh, again, it's a Windows only platform and uh, the Channelizer Essential Bundle ships with this Wi-Spy, which is the actual spectrum analyzer that sweeps the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. And then, uh, of course, it comes with the Channelizer software. We also ship the uh, a directional antenna that replaces this omnidirectional antenna here. Um, and, uh, and so what that allows you to do is you can locate sources of interference. <clears throat> so if you're not sure where uh, an interferer is coming from or you're not sure where the interfering device is, uh, usually you can kind of unplug the omnidirectional antenna, replace it with the directional antenna, and then it kind of helps you locate uh, sources of interference. And I'll kind of show how this works a little bit later. Um, also, Channelizer has a, a Wi-Fi scanner built into it, so it uses the chipset in your Wi-Fi adapter to uh, scan for neighboring networks and your networks. Uh, this allows you to check for Wi-Fi dead spots for your network to make sure you know you have sufficient coverage throughout your environments, whether it's a customer's house, whether it's your house, whether it's your office, your home office, um, what have you. The, the the coolest feature that I think Channelizer has that that none of our other tools really have quite yet is this waterfall menu. Um, so it's kind of like a, a a DVR. You as soon as you open Channelizer, it starts recording everything: your spectrum, your Wi-Fi information, everything. And, uh, and then you can go back in time and rewind it if you catch something, maybe it's intermittent interference, you can fast forward it, you can pause it and troubleshoot. Um, it's a really, really cool feature. And uh, these recordings you can also you know, send to other people who have Channelizer or, or even to the support team here at MediGeek and, and we can troubleshoot your uh, Wi-Fi environment for you, just basically playing back your recordings. A really, really neat tool and it's, it's, we've put a lot of time into this, uh, this feature. Another really great feature that Channelizer comes with automatically now is the report builder accessory. And this just allows you to build really professional reports. Um, we pre-stock it with uh, literature so you don't have to know what everything means. It kind of explains it already as soon as you put the graph in the report, which you can then export as PDF or print it out and hand you a customer and it makes you look really, really professional. Another really cool add-on that we have that's available, and I'm sure uh, Streakwave sells this as well, is the clean air accessory. So if you uh, find yourself deploying Cisco access points that are clean air enabled, you can actually tap into the spectrum sniffing capabilities of those access points. And, uh, and this is pretty much the only tool that we have that allows you to remotely troubleshoot networks as well. Um, you know, you could have an office in, in, you know, in Europe, for instance, and uh, troubleshoot that from your home. Uh, tap into the uh, Cisco Clean Air enabled access point. So a pretty cool feature. It's called the Cisco Clean Air Accessory. 
Again, just a bit on why it's important to have a spectrum analyzer of some sort, um, just because uh, uh, Wi-Fi devices are half duplex, uh, they, they only one can talk on a channel at a time, uh, and they're very polite. Wi-Fi devices are very polite. If they if they hear something like a microwave, which tend to leak in the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, if they hear some RF like that from non-Wi-Fi devices, they wait their turn to talk on the network, and they just they kind of hold up and they wait until uh, you know your burrito's finished uh, microwaving here before they actually start talking on the network. So it's really important to have a tool that can kind of visualize what's going on there. This is what a baby monitor looks like in Channelizer. As you can see, it's uh, pretty frustrating because it hops from channel to channel. Uh, here it started on channel five, and uh, maybe if you had a network on channel six, maybe you moved it over to channel uh, 11 or something like that, uh, you know, to avoid this interference. And lo and behold, it hops over to channel nine and kind of interferes with the channel 11 network a little bit. Uh, and then it hops over to channel one here. So it's really cool to see kind of the behavior of devices like this in Channelizer and really catch the intermittent stuff. This is what Bluetooth looks like. Uh, again, this was like a ton of Bluetooth devices and a large file transfer taking place, but uh, typically Bluetooth won't interfere with Wi-Fi networks too much. But if you have enough of it going on, it certainly can. It kind of looks like this and, and, and it's certainly disrupting uh, some of this uh, this modulation here, some of this this Wi-Fi activity here. Finally, this one's kind of fun. You don't see these too much in the wild anymore, but these old uh, video cameras used to wreak havoc. Um, now, of course, with Nest and, and cameras like that, that basically associate your Wi-Fi network. Um, now, instead of these uh, weird kind of uh, you know spikes and crown shaped, uh, they, they, now they just look like normal Wi-Fi interference, and but they're still bleat red because video is still obviously a uh, a very high throughput activity. And so with that, I'll go ahead and uh, demo Channelizer and kind of show you some things uh, firsthand here of what it looks like. So when you first fire up Channelizer, it starts sweeping the 2.4 gigahertz band only. Um, to change this, you can just go to the Y Spy menu at the top here. And I like to select dual band, so it sweeps both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band at the same time. So right now I'm looking at the 2.4 gigahertz band. To toggle between the two, you just click on this arrow in the top left corner. Uh, so now I'm looking at the 5 gigahertz band. Um, and of course, uh, there is a Wi-Fi scanner built in here. I'm on logical mode, so I'm breaking all the radios apart because I wanted to see right before this what radio I was associated to. And if you see this little um, this little green icon, this is actually a brand new feature. <clears throat> This is telling me what network I'm currently associated to. So I can tell that my laptop is on the 5 gigahertz band here around channel 42. Um, so that's great. That's uh, where I want to be. I have an access point that's right next to me. I, I would hope that I'm not steering down to the 2.4 gigahertz band. And I'm not sure if my uh, laptop would be able to handle this, uh, this webinar being presented uh, on the 2.4 gigahertz band. So I'm glad to see that if I switch into logical mode, it'll now just kind of group all of the SSIDs together. So if I select my one network, my home network here is called Cathify. Now I'm just seeing all the radios of my home network. And if I switch to the 2.4 gigahertz band, you'll see my two 2.4 gigahertz radios. I have a studio out back. <clears throat> so that's why you see two radios kind of uh, going up and down here. Of course, if I want to see neighboring networks as well, I can just place a check mark in this box here and I see all my neighboring networks. Um, so I can kind of get an idea for um, you know, what's the best channel for me to select here? Um, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of work here and I think channel 11 so far based on, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here between channels one and seven in my neighborhood. So I think channel 11 is a safe spot. And uh, just for the record, co-channel interference. So if I'm sharing a channel with other neighbors, that's preferred to adjacent channel. Um, so I'd rather probably have this because there's a lot of adjacent stuff here. I've some uh, some neighbors who uh, decided to put their access points on channel four and they're just causing adjacent channel interference to uh, to any uh, of my neighbors on channels one and six because there's not a lot of space here in the 2.4 gigahertz bands. One thing I kind of want to show is uh, again channelizers the deep dive into spectrum analysis and so I'm going to introduce uh, an intermittent interfere something that you might see uh, you know at a customer for a site or in an industrial environment or something like that. I'm going to introduce an interferer here. And right off the bat, I'm going to get my annotation tool. <clears throat> you can kind of see something happening over here in the waterfall menu. And so you can kind of see it starting to appear here. Now, keep in mind, I'm using a two-minute time span. So I'm looking at the last two minutes 
distance is spectrum. Uh, blue, this blue color just means that less than 10% of the spectrum is being utilized. So blue is a lot like a clap. It doesn't really interrupt our conversation at all, um, but, uh, and I can keep talking. It's not gonna interrupt the Wi-Fi. Um, but as soon as you start seeing green, that means about 20 to 30%. As soon as you see orange, uh, that kind of means 30 to 40% to 50%. And red is over 50%. And so as soon as this interferer kind of hits this two minute time span, you're going to see it bleed red, right? This is a significant interferer. And what's cool with channelizers, I can just kind of speed up the process and just go right over this interference and, and boom, there it is. And one thing that's kind of interesting to take note of is that all those neighbors that I saw on channel six, uh, they're gone. Now, this interference is, is so hot and heavy, basically, that it knocked all of those beacons off. I couldn't associate to those network, networks if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this source of interference just to mimic kind of a intermittent source of interference. Um, um, also, I want my neighbors to be able to use their Wi-Fi. It's about 11, 12 here, and a lot of people are working from home, so this might be kind of a rude thing for me to do. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug that interference and uh, let those networks kind of breathe again. You can, and you can see those beacons uh, kind of populate again on channel six there as they have room to breathe. Now this interference is, is, uh, is taken care of. Um, but with Channelizer, again, this is the deep dive into spectrum analysis. How do we figure out what that was? Well, what's cool is, again, you can always go back in, in, in time and, and kind of select it and troubleshoot what's going on. Uh, a really big feature that people really like about Channelizer is this interferers tab down here. You can actually select little signatures, uh, RF signatures, and you can drag them up and see if uh, see if they match. So this is some 802.11b activity, which fits right here, that blue uh, 802.11 activity. That's just probably my network and other neighboring networks just, just beaconing, saying, hey, I'm here. I'm this network. I support these data rates. You can connect to me. I don't see too much heavy throughput happening, at least at this point in time. And uh, yeah, and you can just keep dragging up and seeing if you find the right uh, source here. So it's clearly not an AV transmitter. You know, clearly not Bluetooth. <clears throat> this device is actually supposed to mimic an RFID reader. So if you kind of bring this up, uh, it you know fits pretty nicely here. Kind of uh, fits pretty well, right? So you can kind of like self-identify what's going on. We used to try and have Channelizer do this part automatically, but we found that it wasn't consistent. It's just better to have a human uh, kind of analyzing this and 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 really trying to figure out what it might be. I'm going to go ahead and introduce this. Just a quick just to, for a moment here to show you how the device finder feature works. So that, again, we'll, we'll say this is some intermittent interference and we're not sure what it is. Let's go back to real time here where this uh, interference is starting to occur. If we wanted to locate this, all you have to do is just kind of select, select and drag around it. Click on the device finder feature, clean up your selection. And at this point, you can either use the omnidirectional antenna or, uh, or you can plug, plug in the directional antenna at this point. And you basically play hot or cold with the signal strength. So the lower that blue line goes, the farther away you are from the interference, you're getting farther away from it. You need to walk the other direction, basically. The closer, the higher the blue line goes, the closer you are to the interference, and that means you're basically on top of it. So let's just say I found it real quick. I uh, removed the device. And maybe at this point, I want to uh, kind of prove what happens to the customer. I want to build a nice report here. And again, this is a really strong point of channelizer. Um, so at this point, you know, everything that I've done is saved in the sessions. And so you have to go to view sessions manager to kind of see everything. So even since the beginning of this broadcast, this was my very first 2.4 gigahertz sweep. And then I switched it to dual band, right? And so then I had uh, this, this dual band sweep. So let's go back to the 2.4 gigahertz band where we had this first interference. And let's just say I want to kind of prove to the customer that uh, this was an issue, that there was something going on and I, you know, have removed it. But let's do a before and after. Really easy, you just go to the report builder menu, you click new report. And uh, once you hop in this report, you basically just, you know, I like to add the density graph. You can add tons of graphs, pretty much any tab or, you know, place you see in Channelizer, you can add it to this uh, report builder accessory. Again, it comes pre-stocked with the literature that explains the colors that I explained earlier, um, talking about how, you know, red is bad, basically over 50% utilization. And uh, I also really like to throw in a networks table to show that uh, the Wi-Fi networks weren't allowed to breathe here. Uh, there's almost nothing operating on channel six or anywhere in between. Uh, really, the only networks that survived was a CenturyLink uh, uh, network and then my own network on channel 11. And, uh, and let's just do a before and after. So now I want to go to after the device finder. We had another full 2.4 gigahertz sweep. In fact, this is live right now. And so I'm just going to kind of select a point in time right here. Um, take a look at my networks table. 
it looks like I'm not seeing any beacons here. There we go. There they are. Let's let's uh, add my time span to a little bit a little bit larger here, just to make sure all my Wi-Fi beacons are in the window that I want them. There we go. That looks pretty good. So we can go back to the report builder accessory and uh, let's go ahead and add a density graph again to show that. Uh, oh, I'm in the five gigahertz band, so let's remove that. Let's go to the 2.4 gigahertz band here. All right. And now we're just going to add another density graph just to kind of prove that uh, that I removed that source of interference. And, uh, and then I'm also going to uh, add another networks table here. So I'm going to maximize this. You can see what I what I did here. So I had a before and after. Um, you know, the report builder adds whatever your time selection is around. And so I just went back in time, um, kind of proved that there was some source of interference here. It looks really, really professional, by the way. When you print this thing off and hand it to a customer, you know, it, it's, it's uh, very professional looking. I've got a lot of really good uh, feedback from this tool. And then, of course, kind of the after, right, where we removed the interference on channel six. All these networks are now uh, allowed to breathe. We also, you know, th there's a lot of stuff you can you can kind of show here, too. Like, for instance, you know, my network is at negative 32 dBm. That's a great signal strength. Um, and I can kind of throughout the house go to each room. Uh, and you can actually make notes in the waterfall graph. If you right click here, you can actually make a note. And a lot of people use this just to denote which room they're in. So you can almost get away with a, a site survey of sort and just kind of, you know, name the room that you're at at that point in time and walk to the next room and kind of check for coverage and, and th things like that. Really, that's pretty much, there, there's a lot of other stuff I recommend checking out. You can trial this uh, software uh, if you just type in Channelizer Trial, uh, but a really, really great software. It does require the Wi-Fi DBX hardware to perform the uh, spectrum analysis, but uh, that's pretty much Channelizer in a nutshell. A lot of other really cool features I, I recommend checking out. Uh, the next tool I want to talk about is very similar to Channelizer, except uh, except that it works on mobile devices. Um, so again, Channelizer, what I just showed you, will only operate on Windows, you know, on a on a Surface Go or a laptop of some sort is would would be ideal. Um, but a lot of people are starting to like using their mobile phones. Um, so we actually have a, a tool called Wi-Fi Air, which again is just a spectrum analyzer with the Wi-Fi chipset in it, and it works with the Air Viewer application. The so Wi-Fi Air is this device here. It's a little, little bit of a different form factor uh, as, as opposed to the Wi-Fi DBX. Um, and that's because there's a few more uh, pieces in there. Um, most, notably, um, most notably, we have a, uh, a spectrum analyzer in there. Um, we have a Wi-Fi chipset in there as well. And so that kind of gives you this real-time network overview. It's just like Insider, just like the Wi-Fi scanning portion of Channelizer. You can see what's going on in your network. And again, we do have a spectrum analyzer in there and a one by one packet capture adapter. So we're able to see quite a bit of information with that. Uh, we're able to get client details uh, kind of on a pretty great level. We're able to see all the beacons of, of any network since those are just sent at the most basic data rates possible. We can glean a lot of information with that. Um, again, a little bit more on the connected client count. Uh, we're able to see roaming history. We're able to see, you know, uh, signal strength. You can actually track clients on your uh, on your network and and figure out where they might be. You can see how much uh, usage they're they're causing on the network. Um, a lot of lot of really cool stuff. And again, you know, this particular client device roamed from uh, one access point to this access point. Then it looks like it steered down to the 2.4 gigahertz band and then roamed to another access point on the 2.4 gigahertz radio. Um, being able to see that in even a desktop software is pretty amazing, let alone on your phone, right, or your mobile device that you prefer to use. So that's pretty neat. And uh, and then just recently, we actually uh, uh, updated this tool to allow you to take snapshots of your network. So you can kind of walk around each room of, of your environment, send a snapshot up to the cloud, which is just my.medigeek.com. And, uh, and you can kind of have that stuff for historical analysis. And, uh, and if you have Wi-Fi issues in the future, well, you can see what changed because you took a snapshot of your entire network and your neighboring networks around you. We kind of built this section for, uh, uh, this is a great area for internet service provider technicians who have to go in and deploy Wi-Fi because um, you can just send this back to a centralized database and uh, and someone else can kind of analyze the results and you have a record of, of signal strength and coverage and things like that. Um, so a, a lot of different customer segments can use this. Um, it's pretty handy and again we call it snapshots. And so with that I'll go ahead and uh, and demo here. Right now I'm using an iPad uh, to demo. Let me uh, screen share real quick. 
Okay, so I prefer to use the iPad just because the screen real estate is uh, uh, much larger, it looks pretty nice. We ship the Y-Spy, which I'm plugging in right now to the iPad. We ship the Y-Spy Air with about four or five different cables to make sure it'll work with your mobile device of choice. USB-C, USB Lightning, USB Mini, and I think a couple others, just to make sure uh, it'll work with your device. So first thing I like to show is that, uh, you know, the, the, the analytics that we have from Apple are very basic. We kind of have this, uh, uh, you're associated to this network with the check mark, and then you have this little signal strength with the lock saying it's secure to some extent, and uh, and uh, you have three bars out of three. So not not too much. That's really all Apple allows you to have, unless you have some sort of external hardware. And that's why the Wi-Fi Air is, is so handy and so important. You have to kind of circumvent that hardware restriction that Apple puts in place on their devices, and Google as well. And, uh, and use some sort of external hardware. So right off the bat, you know, I'm performing Wi-Fi scanning. I can see I'm associated to the Cathy Fi network, so I'm just gonna tap in that card one more time. And uh, at this point, I really like to showcase first that I'm associated to the five gigahertz band. This is really a uh, helpful analytic. I know that because I'm seeing channel 42 here, and uh, I have this chain link icon, which means I'm associated to that band. If I was associated to the 2.4 gigahertz radio, that chain link icon would be right here. Where, uh, where I can see my network's on channel 11. So really good to be able to make sure that uh, that my device is on the band I want it to be on. Um, of course, it has the signal strength over time. Uh, you know, Channelizer has this as well. I didn't showcase it, but the farther I walk away from my network, these lines will go down, and the closer I get, these lines will go back up again. Um, so you can really check for coverage and things like that and take snapshots pretty much uh, the entire time, right? Um, again, being able to see clients on the network is pretty great. And so these are all the clients I currently have, which I'm surprised there's only three right now. Um, but uh, one of these is probably my laptop here. Yeah, at about negative 46 dBm, negative 55 dBm. One of these, I have my iPhone on the desk as well. This is probably my laptop computer. Uh, pretty soon we're gonna have the ability to alias these. Right now you just really get to see the MAC address of the client. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll release an update here shortly where, uh, where hopefully we can alias this because I know this is my uh, MacBook Pro, for instance. Um, but uh, again, if I didn't know where this device was, it'd be really easy to locate it with the uh, signal strength analytic here. And of course, if it were to hop from one access point to the other, uh, I would see that history here, which I think is pretty, pretty neat. Just a little bit on the spectrum analyzer. I'm going to toggle networks off here so I don't see those ziggurats anymore. <clears throat> and uh, you can see the spectrum analyzer is pretty quick. Uh, very similar to channelizer. We can see this, uh, you know, 802.11b activity here on channel 11. Most likely coming from uh, my network speaking, but I'm going to introduce that same source of interference. And uh, hopefully this doesn't uh, kick me off the uh, off the network or off the webinar here. But uh, so I'm introducing that same source of interference that I introduced in Channelizer. You can see how quickly it showed up, right? Uh, and uh, I'm going to bring it closer to the Y Spy Air so you can kind of see it get a little bit taller. And I'm going to kind of bring it away a little bit. And it looks like, uh, yeah, there we go. Bring it a little bit at arm's length. You can see how sensitive it is, right? This is just at arm's length, and you can see the difference here. Uh, and I'm going to bring it right back closer. You can just see how uh, how easy it is to track source of interference with this tool. And uh, I'm going to unplug it so that, uh, again, my neighbors can uh, begin using their Wi-Fi uh, if they are using the 2.4 gigahertz band, at least. And so this is a, a really great tool that a lot of people will pull out first. Um, the, you know, before they get the, the backpack, you know, out and the laptop and things like that. I mean, you can literally fit this thing inside your pocket. Uh, even connected to your phone, you can still fit it inside your pocket, right, if you have large enough pockets. Um, so a lot of people will actually bring this out, troubleshoot their environment, check for spectrum interference, check for noise, things like that. Uh, again, if you toggle networks on, you can kind of see the ziggurats. I know that I have a network on 11 and channel 36, so I have these networks uh, pretty much pre-selected pre here. If you select the uh, the channel 42, you can see my two, my five gigahertz band, excuse me, right here. And, uh, and you know, you can dive into cards that way, right? Two different areas to do that. Um, so anyways, I've been really happy with the spectrum analyzer on this thing. Uh, I think it works pretty great. Again, if you toggle networks off, that allows the resources to focus more on spectrum. So I'm kind of just waiting for the, the, the five gigahertz spectrum to show up here. Um, and uh, I have my uh, iPhone right next to this, and I'm gonna perform a speed test, hoping that my iPhone at least is on the five gigahertz band. Sometimes it does have a tendency to, uh, to um, steer down to the 2.4, but I'm gonna run a speed test on my iPhone. It's happening right now, and I'm gonna bring it as close as possible to my device. And you can see, this is kind of what a, 
this is an 80 megahertz wide network mind you so it can handle a bit more so my speed test isn't really maxing it out but you can see that there's some clear uh you know wi-fi activity here right um and so that's kind of what it looks like uh the spectrum portion of this tool we'll kind of show you this utilization quite nicely um, so yeah, this is Wi-Fi Air. Again, it's uh, uh, our mobile offering. It's a lot like Channelizer or Insider, but for mobile devices. Next tool I want to showcase is uh, is more of a advanced tool, so to speak. Um, so we've so far we've looked at the physical layer, uh, layer one in the OSI model, which is Spectrum and a little bit of Wi-Fi scanning. And if you can't really solve the problem with that, I, I would say that solves a majority of problems out there. But if you, if you still are having Wi-Fi issues, like a connected client issue, <clears throat> doesn't seem to want to connect, or maybe it's not maybe it's not steering to the five gigahertz band, or maybe it can't associate to an access point that's on a certain channel. Um, you know, there's tons of cases out there. You kind of have to move to the next layer, which we call the packet layer or layer two. So with the spectrum analyzer that I was showing you earlier, we're kind of seeing all the sum of activity on a channel, whether it's Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi, or what have you. Um, with packet analysis, we're actually looking at this very specific conversation happening between the client and the access point. And you have to remember in Wi-Fi protocol, there's just you know thousands of packets sent like a second basically between the client and the access point uh, to ensure that uh, you know things are running smoothly. Um, you know, it's 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 pretty fascinating. And before people use tools like Wireshark, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this tool, but uh, it's a it's a it's a kind of a packet an analysis tool. Um, but it's really hard to visualize airtime and usage. It's hard to filter down to the client device that you want to look at. It's hard to filter down to the access point. Um, you, you almost have to be an engineer to use this tool effectively. It's very very difficult to understand. And that's why we built IPA. Uh, it kind of represents, uh, you know, the entire packet capture on a channel, and it, it kind of breaks it down in a really nice, easy to understand pie charts, basically. And so, uh, kind of to break this down, this entire uh, circular representation is of a channel. This was a packet capture on a channel. We'll say channel one, and uh, this very first slice of pie represents the network that's on that channel. So this is uh, this was a Bronco guest network. We uh, in Boise here, we have the Broncos at the university. And so this was taken on campus. And the next slice of pie out is the actual access point. So if you're in an, you know, an office environment, you might have more than one access point on channel one, um, but uh, uh, you know, this one obviously just had one access point on channel one. If you were to take a multiple channel uh, packet capture, you would see more access points here on the network, right? If you, had, if you had multiple access points in your environment, of course. But this one, we just have one, and right away we're able to see that this network and this access point were taking up almost half of the airtime available on this channel right very easy to see that the next slice of pie out is the client device so this little slice this might have been like an apple iphone or something or some sort of laptop of some sort but we can see that this one client device took a quarter of the airtime pretty much immediately that's something you can you can see what happened which would just be so impossible in in, in wireshark really and uh, finally the last slice of pie out this is the actual frame type um, so what type of traffic is uh, being transmitted the most from 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 these these devices a little bit on the colors we color blue as a data frame so seeing blue is usually pretty healthy that means your network's being used if you see too much uh, orange which is control frames you might have an issue if you see too many purple uh, frames on the outside management frames you know that you're probably just there's too many beacons or probes too much management overhead um, so it's really easy to kind of see what's going on based on the outermost ring as well because that's the actual type of traffic being transmitted IPA will take in packet captures from a few different sources. We ship the uh, uh, IPA Essential Bundle with this uh, Edamax AC1750. Uh, this allows you to natively capture packets in IPA and in Windows, which is a, a pretty big deal. Uh, it's really not that uh, easy to do that. And so uh, we, we basically overwrite drivers across the standard Wi-Fi adapter in order to do that. Uh, we like this adapter because it's three by three spatial stream, so it's gonna catch as much as, as you possibly can out there when you're in monitor mode. Um, and uh, it's pretty small too, it has a nice form factor. Of course, if you have a, a MacBook uh, Air or Pro, um, those have really great packet capture adapters in them as well. You can export a PCAP with those and import it into IPA. Um, and then of, of course, some access points will spit out PCAPs um, that you can also import into IPA.
I mean, I'll go ahead and show you that. I want to make sure we don't go over time and make sure we have enough time for questions. So I'm going to quickly uh, go over IDA as well and just kind of show you a couple sample files. So again, this can be trialed as well. If you type in IPA trial, you can get a key for this. Um, right off the bat, we, we provide these four examples, which I think are, are pretty great. The first one I really like to showcase is this uh, one called Lots of Virtual SSIDs. This was sent in to me by a customer who is a network administrator at a, a university. And, uh, and uh, this one right off the bat was pretty fascinating because immediately I saw all these purple frames. And remember, these are either beacons or probes of some sort. And so right off the bat, I could see that uh, uh, something was going wrong here. There's no data frames and they're, they're all perfectly symmetrical. And uh, at first I was kind of mesmerized because uh, it's kind of pretty actually, it's very symmetrical. And uh, all this is, is this customer just set up virtual SSIDs on all his access points. Um, and so if you look here to the left, he, you know, he had, he had all these SSIDs set up and onboarding, uh, staff, students, VR, guests, bring your own device, another guest network, VR. Um, and, you know, one thing to remember is that every virtual SSID that you have set up 10 times a millisecond, it's sending out beacon frames saying, hey, I'm here, I support these data rates, you can connect to me. Um, and, and what that looks like is basically like this. You can see here in the airtime graph that a quarter of the airtime that was available on this channel is completely eaten up by this management overhead. Um, just these, these virtual SSIDs broadcasting 10 times a millisecond. Um, so typically that's why we recommend not to have too many virtual SSIDs set up. It very quickly kind of compounds and uh, just eats up your available airtime that you have on a channel. And so if a, you know devices did actually need to use this network, they would struggle just a little bit. But I thought this one was uh, re really, really fascinating. Um, and, and very quick and easy to see what's going on there in IPA. Um, another one that I took, here's one where I streamed Netflix from my iPhone uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to an Apple TV, actually, in the MetaGeek office. And uh, so right off the bat, I think I took this channel on, uh, or the scan on channel like 149 or something like that, let's see here. Um, yeah, 157 is the channel that I scanned here. And so there were a couple other networks on 157. You know, the Hawaii is the building we operating in. They have their own Wi-Fi network throughout. And so if I want to cut this stuff out, I don't really care about this traffic. I'm going to go ahead and just click on MetaGeek. And that kind of full screens it in a sense. Um, so now I can just see this next slice is the access point, which we called the plink. We only had one access point at this time on channel 157. So, of course, we just see one here for this outermost circle or this innermost circle here. And then find the next slice out. This was my actual Apple iPhone, and this was my Apple TV. So it was really fun to kind of see that the data, most of the data was actually coming into my Apple iPhone, and then it was just transmitting that with these control frames, right? Request to send, clear to send um, to the Apple TV, which was also taking a little bit of QoS data as well. Um, but really, really fun to kind of see that. One thing that people use this tool for is I've already filtered down to my network, but let's say I want to filter down to a specific point in time. Maybe I want to see what the spike is. With just a couple of clicks, uh, you know, let's, let's say I want to see uh, what's going on with this one Apple device, which, uh, which I believe was my iPhone at the time. So again, I'm just going to click into this device and I filter down to that Apple device this point in time. And a lot of people use this to then send a Wireshark from file, send to Wireshark. And so I've just, my filtered selection now has just been sent to Wireshark. So I don't have to mess with any crazy filters where you almost have to be an engineer to kind of figure out how to use. And I just have my nice cleaned up selection between that one client device, which is an Apple iPhone and that access point and all the frames that happen in between. Um, and of course in Wireshark, you know, a lot of people know more about this than I do, but there's a lot of flags and things like that that you can uh, check for here to make sure, you know, does it support this channel? Does it um, you know, is it even able to uh, associate to, you know, the, the five gigahertz band, uh, things like that. You can really check to see it in here in this tool to see what exactly errors are, are getting thrown up from this client device. Um, so a lot of people use it for that. Um, I'm going to go to another example here. Instead of the streaming Netflix one, I'm going to go to this MetaGeek Office one and kind of showcase the last, I think, really valuable point here. Again, I'm going to dive in just to the Medicaid Guesses idea. It doesn't look like there were many other networks, but I want to point out uh, this section over here, which is basically the data rates being used um, as a nice little bar graph, essentially. And so here I'm able to see if I hover over each bar graph, I can see the data rate 
percentage. So I can see here that 22% of traffic on this network was sent at 72 megabits per second. And that's pretty great. That's a really high data rate. That means some you know, Wi-Fi devices were flying and able to communicate very quickly and then get off the network when they were done. Small fraction were uh, transmitting at 58. And then finally, most of the traffic, 74%, were sent at 24 megabits per second. Um, of course, you know this was a MetaGeek setup network, so we, we disabled lower data rates um, and so we, we kind of forced all the devices to talk quickly, uh, which also means that they can't stray too far away from the access point um, without maybe trying to associate to a new access point. So at this point, we had about four or five access points, and uh, it ended up being a very efficient Wi-Fi network just because we disabled those lower data rates, forced you know clients to roam when they went out of those data rate uh, signal strengths, basically. You can see very little, looks like very little traffic was sent at six megabits per second, most likely just the beacons, right? Uh, the beacons of the, of the networks just saying, hey, I'm here, I support these data rates. They usually are sent at the lowest possible data rate that you have set up for your network. Um, so this is a really handy feature. If I were to see, uh, if I were to see a high column here, high usage of maybe one megabit per second, I would know that my network is, is very slow. And, uh, and I would probably want to disable those data rates just to ensure that uh, faster devices can get on and off the network. And uh, those slower devices either need to get closer to the access point or find a new access point to, uh, to talk slowly to, right? Um, so this is a very handy section. And finally, the last part here is we have this Analyze tab in IPA. So while, while this tool is kind of geared a little bit towards uh, uh, experts, we also try and uh, kind of boil down some, some data for the non-experts as well. So for instance, we saw some device on this network had a high retry rate. Basically just means the, the, the device uh, uh, wasn't able to send everything all the time, uh, e either because of some interference or something like that, maybe too many reflective surfaces, things like that. Um, but we also give uh, some, some insights as to what you can do to fix that. Um, and so of course, uh, you know, we have some, maybe it's a Wi-Fi chipset issue and you click learn more to kind of break that down and see some more details. Maybe it's uh, adjacent channel interference. Maybe it's non-Wi-Fi interference, for, for example. Um, so pretty cool insights that uh, we try and boil down. And we're working on this as, as much as we can to kind of um, see what we can gather from the packet capture that you guys uh, bring into IPA. And then we just kind of send some automatic insights to say, hey, you know, here's some issues we saw and here's some some ways to fix it. Um, so that's pretty much IPA in a nutshell. Those are pretty much all the tools that MetaGeek have to offer. Again, ending with this uh, uh, layer two protocol analysis tool. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and hand it back over to Angela and see if we have any questions. Hey, Casey, thank you. Um, so that we do have some questions, but those came like earlier in the beginning of the presentation. Cool. They're asking um, that on the channelizer is show channel 42, but that's not a valid ch channel number, is it? It is, yeah. So my network actually uses <clears throat> 80 megahertz wide channels. And <clears throat> in order to denote 80 megahertz wide channels, they use the very center of that 80 megahertz wide channel, which happens to be 42. Um, and so kind of when you, when you hear someone say channel 42, that kind of uh, makes you know that it's an 80 megahertz wide channel. Um, another way you can say that is you can say, I used 44 as my primary and 40 as my secondary, which means 44 was my primary uh, 40 megahertz wide channel. My secondary 40 megahertz wide channel was channel 40. Um, because remember, even 80 megahertz wide channels, 160 megahertz wide channels, they're just you know basically two, uh, they're basically two networks cobbled together is a way to think about it. And so uh, for 80 megahertz wide channels, we do use you know 42 and I, I'm not off the top of my head, I can't remember what other channels denote 80 megahertz wide channels, but be 80 megahertz beyond that, right? So it's a good question. Okay, great, thank you. And yeah. also this was also in the beginning of the presentation, I believe when you're showing the monitors and stuff, they were asking, um, Putting an AP in the kitchen or using Wi-Fi there would be recommended. Can you say that again, Angela? I think you broke up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. They were asking um, when you, if you put an AP in the kitchen or using Wi-Fi, would that be not recommended? Mm. You know, I, I would just this make goes sure. Back you have... in the beginning of the presentation, when you're showing the monitor. 
Right. I would make sure that you had a spectrum analyzer just to make sure that uh, none of that kitchen equipment was causing any sort of interference in the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bands. Um, of course, I've seen it. I've seen a lot of that be an issue just because microwaves do tend to leak in the 2.4 gigahertz band. It's not like a, too much of a health issue or anything like that. It, it just kind of happens. And sometimes it also means that you have to replace it. Um, I, I've seen a lot of leaky microwaves cause Wi-Fi issues at lunchtime. That's a very common issue. It seems to be mostly microwaves, so I'm not sure if there's any other kitchen appliances that might leak, uh, you know, interference in the 2.4 gigahertz band. But, uh, I, you know, I th again, I think it would be fine if you had an eye on the spectrum and making sure that there's nothing causing issues. Otherwise, you know, it should be fine as long as there's not too much metal around. You know, if the kitchen staff need to use Wi-Fi, then of course, right, you need to have good solid Wi-Fi and try not to have them, you know, go through a, couple, a few different walls to get good good data rates and things like that. Um, and, and if anything, it might be a good idea to uh, either lower the output power on the 2.4 gigahertz radio or disable it entirely because that radio can can go pretty far. Even if you have metal, uh, usually it's nice to, to have the 5 gigahertz radio just kind of contain that one space, which will just say the kitchen. Um, and so the kitchen gets nice coverage from the 5 gigahertz beacon and the five gigahertz band, but uh, outside of the kitchen, you have to use some other access points, right? Um, so th that, that would be my suggestion is, is maybe one five gigahertz radio in the kitchen um, to kind of help, you know, if the kitchen staff need to use the Wi-Fi, otherwise no one else is gonna be able to use that Wi-Fi because it should stop a as soon as there's some attenuation. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, another question is, uh, is there any tool that has visualization of spectrum using location or GPS? You know, for that, you would need a site survey tool, uh, a dedicated site survey tool. Um, those tools do allow you to kind of import maps or floor plans or GPS data locators, things like that. Um, our tools really don't have the ability to import floor plans or use GPS locators or anything like that. Um, pretty much you just walk around and, and where you're at is is what you see and and you see it from the perspective of a client device. Um, and again, with Channelizer, you can kind of put those notes in to denote where you are. So you can say, hey, I'm out here, you know, uh, on, you know, if you had a golf course or something, I'm on hole one right here, I'm on hole two right here. And you can kind of make notes uh, to the signal strength and things like that. But uh, no, we, we, we don't have the ability to do anything with GPS. That would be more for a site survey tool. Perfect. Um, looks like those are all the questions we have in the time. So thank you, Casey, for the presentation and everyone that attended. Again, this webinar is recorded and we'll post this on our YouTube channel and website and along with sending out a mailer to everybody so you have um, the presentation on hand. Um, again, stay safe, everyone. And is there any last minute things that you wanted to add on, Casey, before we leave? No, I think that's good. I really appreciate you uh, having me here today, Angela. I really appreciate it. That was That was fun. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Take care.